How can we get the affection and attention that we need to feel and be beautiful and creative without being clingy, needy, and psycho? This is the life lesson we'll learn from the second star of Vedic astrology, Rohini, the arousing woman. In this series, Life Lessons of the Vedic Nakshatra, we'll discover how life really works by exploring the 27 constellations through the mystical Sanskrit words of the Vedic Nakshatra Sutra. So soon I'm going to be publishing my translation and explanation of Taitriya Brahmana's Nakshatra Sutra, which is a condensed mystical code from the ancient Veda that reveals the secrets of both the healthy and the dysfunctional implications of every star of Vedic astrology, every nakshatra. So this week, let's discuss what life lessons we learn from the second of the 27 Vedic stars, Rohini, the arousing woman. As usual, let's begin by hearing the original Sanskrit of the sutra as recorded with the students from my very first session of this nakshatra sutra online class. So here it is, the actual sutra itself. So the idea here is really pretty simple, amazing, amazingly simple. The arousing woman of the procreator needs moisture or water to produce crops or fruits. So let me just explain these words a little bit more before we go and dive into the lesson, the life lesson that we get out of them. The word Rohini, which is actually the name for the nakshatra and the name for this star group, means an arousing thing, right? Especially it means an arousing woman. Rohana means to arouse, to rise up. And it's Rohini, so it means an arousing woman. When you're aroused, you become red. You get color. You get flushed. So Rohini also means a flushed woman, a reddish woman, a blushing woman. So this is a sexy nakshatra. Don't get it wrong. And in case you might be thinking maybe it's not, the sutra also uses the word prajapati, which means the master of praja the master of making babies, the master of procreation. So this is a nakshatra that's all about sexiness, fertility, reproductive or productive ability, the ability to create, the ability to inspire and arouse. So it's a very feminine, sexy, beautiful, creative star. Now the sutra says, apaha prastat, which shows us what this star needs. Parastat means this is what it, it depends on. It depends upon apath, which is water. Now put that word water in quotes because this is your symbolism. This is your symbolic word water. And then it says, O Shadaya Avastat. Avastat means this is what it wants to, to give. It wants to give O Shada. O Shada means vegetables, food, crops, fruition, harvests. So this beautiful, sexy, arousing woman needs water, so to speak, to make crops, so to speak, right? The crop or the oshada is what this beautiful, arousing woman actually wants to produce. It doesn't just mean growing vegetables in the ground. It's the literal wording of it. It means creating children, creating offspring, creating prosperity, creating growth, making love, making enjoyment, making things beautiful and wonderful. And what do you need to be able to make such things? Water is what this woman needs to be able to do what she can do. Water signifies attention, paying attention, taking care of the thing. So this procreative woman, what does she need? Affection, attention, care. What can she, if you give her that, what's she going to give you? Love, beauty, art, children, prosperity, growth. That's what the nakshatra is all about. That's the fundamental symbolism of the nakshatra. So now that we know the fundamental symbolism of the thing, let's talk about the lesson that it teaches us for our lives in general. 
And as I said at the beginning, it's all about how can you get the affection and attention that you need. Everybody needs water. How do you get that water? How do you get the affection and attention that you need to be able to do oshada, to make crops, to feel and be creative and beautiful and productive? But at the same time, not be a clingy, psychopathic, needy person, weak person, right? This is what the life lesson is, how to be dependent upon water without being dependent upon water. So I want to um, explain this life lesson from two points of view. One, the first point of view will be f the male point of view, and the other will be the female point of view, right? So this first life lesson here is for men, or anybody who's in a male role, traditionally male role, or traditionally male mindset. The lesson is this. You can't expect a woman to be beautiful, fertile, or a maker of your happiness or anything unless you give her more than enough water. You have to give her more than enough attention, affection, and practical care. It's really simple. You can't grow a crop that you don't water. So it's a really simple thing if you're wondering, why don't I have a beautiful woman in my life taking care of me? Why don't I have somebody helping me to be happy? It's because you're not willing to give the water, which means the affection, the care, the attention, the valuing to such a person that you, nobody's going to apply for that job position or stay in it. Okay, so it's a simple lesson for men or anybody with dealing with life from that point of view of being the farmer rather than the crop. Now, as far as the life lesson for women or those in a traditionally female role or mindset, it's a little more complicated, as you would probably expect. So the situation here is that we're going to feel starved for water, like a plant. A plant is always trying to get water. So we're going to feel starved for that water of attention and affection easily because that's the very thing that we need to be able to do what we do. But that hunger can easily make us psycho, psycho, like psychopathic. Like, so what do I mean by psychopathic? I mean mentally unstable so that you will destroy your stability and destroy the valuable things in your life just to chase a water source. And it doesn't really matter how many hoops this water source throws up and makes you jump through, you'll jump through them. It doesn't really matter how far you have to chase it. it. doesn't really matter what other water sources you're going to have to abandon or ruin to get this water source that looks promising. That's the psycho psychopathicness of needing water, needing attention, needing affection so much, is that you sacrifice everything for it. So what the life lesson of Rohini teaches us is how to not do that. It's not by not needing water because everybody needs water. But the secret is that it, it's if you concentrate on the avastat or the thing that Rohini will produce, then you can draw the prastat, the thing that Rohini needs. Okay. So to put it in simple terms, the way to not become overly dependent on water sources the way to not go chasing water sources across the planet is to make those water sources line up to water you. Right? That's, that's the ideal. What you want to do is you want to pull sources of affection and attention towards you. You don't want to chase them. You'll lose your life if you go chasing affection sources, but you'll gain your life if you can pull affection and love towards you. So now how do you do that? You do that by oshadaya, by having fruits, by having vegetables, by having crops, by being beautiful, loving, happy, etc. Right? By being beautiful and loving and happy, you draw affection towards you. So really the lesson here is that it's actually the initial mindset that you have to get straight. Because it's going to go in a cycle, it's going to go in a loop. The water allows you to be fruitful. The fruitfulness attracts the farmer to water you. So it's going to go in a cycle. So the, the question is, where do you put your head as 
cons to consider as the first step. If you put your head on the first step that you need water, then you'll, the seed never grows. And you just go chasing water everywhere. But if you put in your head that the first step is to be fruitful, to be loving, to be happy, to be beautiful, then you get it right. You have to have enough ability to be self-nourishing and self-confident that you can express and exhibit the water that you have in you. That is the key. You start there. You, you To realize, like, okay, I already come with some water in me. I can get water for myself. And I can use that to display something that is beautiful and attractive and wonderful in the world to improve the world. That's going to draw people to me, and then that's going to start my love cycle going. The lesson here is if we chase water sources, we're going to become self-destructive and psychopathic. But if we concentrate on using whatever water we have already, you know, not just in yourself, but also don't undervalue. This is the other thing about Rohini Nakshatra. If it's not congruent with the rest of your chart or with the planets that are in it, it's going to make you feel like you need water when you already have water. It's going to make you leave a water source to go chase another one. So if you're careful about that and you use what the water sources that you do have, whether it's both the one that's inherent in you and the ones that you have from whatever people are already there watering you, even if it's only a sprinkle, use whatever water you get to produce whatever fruits and flowers you can. That starts the cycle going where more farmers come to water you better. So this is really a crucial issue in everybody's life, so I hope... This video will be really helpful in radically improving your life. Don't miss the life lessons from the other 26 star clusters of Vedic Astrology. Subscribe to my channel now. And keep your ears up for announcements about the release of this book and the next online classes about it. Thanks.